Okay, we changed location. So now they're in the pawn shop, a place where people bring in items and receive money in return. Okay, um, so three people came into the shop with items to sell. Um, and in fact, the first woman sort of throws down the stuff that she has. And they have uh, this conversation about every person has the right to take care of themselves. He always did. He referring to the person that they stole from. So you might already be kind of putting two and two together um, about who the people in the first conversation were talking about when they were talking about the funeral and maybe who this person is talking about when they say he only worried about himself. Um, so each of these three people basically present the things that they stole from this particular person, okay? Um, <clears throat> so they opened up their, th their bags with the stuff in, okay? And uh, there was a, a pencil case, some buttons, a, a brooch, which is like a pin. Um, nothing of terribly great value, but the appraiser, an appraiser is someone who determines how much something is worth, um, added it up to a total and said, okay, here's what, you're, here's what I will give you, okay? Then the next person comes up and she gives sheets and towels and some clothes, two silver spoons, um, a pair of sugar tongs. Tongs are things that pinch to pick stuff up. Um, and sometimes if you're going to put a square of sugar into your tea, you pick them up with a tongs and put the cube in. Um, so the sugar tongs and some boots. And again, he totals it up and says, okay, here's how much money I will give you, okay? Um, and then the last woman, okay? And they open up the, the bag that she's carrying and they pull out this big roll of fabric of cloth, okay? And they're like, what is this? Are these bed curtains? Now, you might remember someone else in this story who had bed curtains, right? Curtains around their bed to keep them warm and private. And in fact, they're laughing about it because this woman took the bed curtains down while the person she stole from was lying there. So think about how you could steal basically the covers off of someone's bed while they're in the bed. Do you think they were alive? Probably not. So um, then they go ahead and they, they talk again about how much money she's going to get for, for what she brought. And they're also discussing, well, OK, was there anything wrong with this person? What, why did he die? How did he die? Um, because they were afraid that some diseases could have been on the blankets and sheets, and there are diseases that could have been passed that way. Um, so Scrooge is listening and saying, oh, this is really terrible. Like, they just, they stole things from a dead person. This is awful. Um, and the people who are there are just laughing about it, saying, ha, 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 look how much money I got. This is fantastic. And Scrooge says to the spirit, okay, I get it, okay? This, who they're talking about, that could be me, okay? I understand your point, that's enough, okay? Um, but now the spirit takes him somewhere else, okay? And he sees that there's a bed, and on the bed there's something that is covered up. And that something is a dead body. And the room was very dark. Um, and no one was there. So it was just the dead body and nobody else. Okay. Um, and Scrooge looks at the ghost and he says, okay, what is going on? <clears throat> and the ghost points at the head of the dead body. Okay. Um, and he wanted Scrooge to look at the face of the dead man. And Scrooge was like, I really want to do it. I want to know who this is. But at the same time, I can't do this. No way. OK. Um, so he's afraid. And it's entirely possible that he already knows kind of what's happening here.
So the spirit says, please, let's get out of here. And I understand what you're trying to tell me. I understand that if I don't change, this is going to be my life. Okay. But he says, please, please show me someone who cares about the fact that this man died. So the spirit takes him to a house and the house is of a person who owes, owed this man money. And they are happy because they know they won't have to pay the money back anytime soon. So they're not like sad because the man died, right? They're not thinking of the man in a positive way. They're just happy they don't have to pay the money back, okay? So this is not exactly what Scrooge was expecting when he said, please show me someone who feels an emotion because this man is dead. The emotion he saw was happiness because they didn't have to pay back the money. So not exactly what he, he was expecting. They then went to Bob Cratchit's house. The spear took him to Bob Cratchit's house. And while they are at Bob Cratchit's house, they see that everyone has grown a little bit older um, and sadder, and they notice that there is no Tiny Tim. And in fact, during this scene, Scrooge learns that Tiny Tim has died. And he's very upset by this because he was affected emotionally by Tiny Tim when he visited Bob Cratchit's house um, with one of the other ghosts. So this is very disturbing to him. Um, and he's very upset by this revelation, this, um, this news, okay? And then finally Scrooge says, okay, I feel like our time's up. You're not going to show me anything else. But tell me who the dead man was. So he says, I don't know who you were showing me. Please tell me who that was. So the ghost suddenly takes Scrooge back to the area around his house. And instead, the ghost points him towards the churchyard, okay? Um, also known as the, the graveyard or a cemetery. Um, and that is a place where dead people are put in the ground after they have died. And Scrooge, po uh, excuse me, the ghost points in one particular direction and says, go, doesn't say, but points and says, look over there, look over there, okay? And Scrooge says, okay, I'm gonna look. <laughs> but before I look, can you please tell me if I can change these visions you've shown me or if this is going to happen no matter what. And the ghost, because he's creepy, doesn't say anything in response, just points Scrooge to that gravestone. And Scrooge, Scrooge walks towards the grave, trembling, shaking, okay? And he looks at the grave and he sees his own name, Ebenezer Scrooge. And suddenly he knows that he was the dead man. He was the man who was alone, that people stole from, and that no one cared anything about. And that was a very hard realization for him. And the spirit tells him that he was also the man who was in the bed. Okay. And Scrooge makes a very quick turnaround. He says, why tell me this if I can't change it? And the spirit doesn't say anything. <clears throat> okay. Um, but the spirit's hand starts to shake a little bit. And Scrooge asks, please, tell me I can change this. Tell me it isn't too late. I can change my life and therefore change the future. And the spirit's hand just shakes some more. And Scrooge says, okay, I got it. I'm going to honor Christmas and try to keep it all the year. So not like he's going to have a Christmas tree and give presents all year, but keep that spirit of Christmas, that sense of kindness and charity and giving that people um, often tend to have just at Christmas time. So um, <clears throat> he held on to the spirit's hand saying, please, please tell me I can change this. Um, and then the ghost disappeared and Scrooge was back in his own bedroom. Okay, so we know that there are no more ghosts left. We know that three ghosts were supposed to come. They've already come. We're not going to see any more. So um, the next chapter, the next stave is called The End of It, which is, doesn't really tell us much. We just know the story is going to be over. But we will find out 
what Scrooge does as a result of these visions that he has had. Okay, so I'll see you guys in book club next week, and thanks!